If you're a long-time watcher of the channel, you know that all the toys I restored or fixed on this channel are either from my own childhood or my dad's childhood for the exclusive use and play for my son. I don't normally take on other people's projects, but in this video I made an exception for a very special young farmer. I agreed to take on this project if he promised to put it back to good use either carpet farming or in the sandbox. It's a toy after all, and they're meant to be played with. First we'll take my Dremel tool and use a cutoff wheel and just score a little bit of this steering wheel that's bent and broken because it's not fixable and we'll replace it with a new one. Just using a pair of pliers to wiggle and twist and the steering wheel should just come right off with a little bit of force. Now we'll quickly take the opportunity to use the pliers just straighten out that steering shaft just a little bit since I can see now why that steering wheel was bent. Now you've seen me take off these push caps before. Just get them off any way you can. Just using some pliers here and just tearing it off because these are easily replaced and available at most any hardware stores online, eBay, anywhere. They're nothing special. And just one on the side, take the axle out and take the rear wheels off. Now the front wheels, you just have to pull and pry and kind of wiggle and they'll eventually come off if the plastic is still soft. Now if it's hard and brittle, they might just break and then you're going to be replacing them. And here's everything. This tractor is a very simple design and honestly it's not too bad a shape. There's no damaged castings or anything. So we're about ready to start cleaning it up so we can put some new paint on it. Now before we get to the sand blasting, I want to take care of these wheels. As you notice, they're a little yellowed. They're supposed to be a little whiter, more of an off-white. But the sun has aged these. And here's a little trick called Retrobrite that I actually picked up from the 8-bit guy who restores vintage computers. Using this Salon Cream type product, it's like 40% hydrogen peroxide, and you smear it all over the part that you want to retro bright. Uh, cover it in with some plastic. You can submerge this in water, but these parts are small, so we'll just cover it in some plastic wrap. Set it in the sun for, this took about eight hours in the sun, and I think the results speak for themselves. It really shined them up, made them look brand new. Here are some interesting facts about this casting, Bertle number 415. It's based off of the International 3088 in real life. The 3088 was produced from 1981 to 1985, and it was the logical successor from the International Harvester 786 and it wasn't that popular. Actually it had a fairly limited run in just producing around a thousand units. That makes this casting kind of interesting from a standpoint of why Ertl would produce it. Well this casting also came in a couple of different colors. Green, blue, and of course red. But of course the green and blue shown here have vastly different graphics on it to make it a little bit more generic and I think that's why is this casting kind of looks like generic tractor or the one that city kids would probably have because their grandma would buy it because oh little Jimmy likes tractors here's a tractor and he likes green ones you also might know the green and blue are just a little bit off of Ford blue Ford New Holland blue or the John Deere green that everybody is known for. Actually, the green looks to me like a lot of the uh, uh, Dutes Alice uh, tractors of the similar time period. I also don't believe this casting to be all that rare. I mean, I remember this casting in stores, dealerships, and whatnot for sale back when I was younger, and they seem to turn up a lot on eBay and at garage sales. And that's why this is a perfect beginner project. 
you want to restore an Ertl tractor. Now on to the painting. I'm using a self-etching primer here to cover all of the bare casting to make a good foundation for the paint. The paint I'm using is International Red in an implement paint. I've used this a lot and it provides a nice, shiny, and smooth coat. And here it is. Looks really nice. We'll need to put the decals on, and then I'll decide if I want to put a clear coat on the top of it. While we let the paint dry, let's make a box. Now I made a test box here just to see how this is going to work out. I've only done this one other time with a Tonka truck seen here and I decided I was going to make a box for this little tractor here and I learned a lot from that test box so let's lay it out draw it out and then I'll cut it out and then we'll do the folds. The way I'm making this box is very close to the original box and I'm just using pictures that I found on the internet and what I remember as a kid on how these boxes kind of opened up where the top flap is how you open it up with a few tabs and then there's just a little bit that holds the tractor in in the box and then we're gonna paint it up and apply some decals that make it kind of look similar to the original. Now we're going to put some paint on this box, and I chose this color because that's probably closely matches what the original box would have looked like color-wise. And also I need to seal up the cardboard for a technique for applying the decals that you'll see a little bit later. Now to apply the graphics. All I did was work up a few graphics that I found on the internet, and honestly I could have done a little bit better job, but for the scope of this project and the time crunch I was under, this will have to do. I printed them on a laser printer, a toner style printer, in reverse image, and then we used some Mod Podge and put it on fairly thick, and then position the graphics where they ought to go on the box, and then we can use something uh, flat to kind of press out the glue. But you want a nice even coat, a fairly thick coat, because you don't want any air bubbles under there for this technique. And then we have to wait almost 24 hours for this to fully cure and then we can reveal the graphics and below. And to reveal those graphics simply use a wet wash rag or sponge and lightly dampen the area and kind of lightly rub it. You don't want to rub too hard otherwise you will rub the entire thing off. You can use just your fingers but you need to wet and what you're doing is you're softening the paper backing and leaving the Mod Podge that is sealed the ink that you printed it on onto the substrate. In this case, painted cardboard, which I've done this on wood and metal and it turns out great. I've never done this on cardboard. That's why I needed to refine my technique by just rubbing lightly, going back and forth with my finger to rub off all the paper. And you may have to do this a couple times. Let it dry and then go back and re-wet it. And if you got some of the Mod Podge on the back side, you're gonna to have to apply a little bit more water in those areas to sort of release the Mod Podge's hold on the paper backing. Now it's just a matter of folding up all the flaps and gluing some of the flaps together. 
and stick in the little tabs in the top that I made before. And that's almost the finished box. We're not quite done yet. There's another little detail I need to add. I made this box and I wanted to show how I did it because I want to see if some other people can maybe perfect on my technique. I'm also going to work on it in the future and I might have some separate videos on that specifically. And here it is. Here's what it looks like and I'm excited to give it to the young little farmer that it belongs to. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out my website. Uh, buy a t-shirt or a sticker or two. Links are all in the description. You can follow me on other social media like my Instagram and Facebook page. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.